Hey everybody, Chris Gill here. Today we are talking about gates and how we can use them to clean up our drum sound. Let's jump in. So I finished recording a set of drum tracks here in my studio, and as I was working on them, getting them ready uh, to send to the mix engineer, um, it, it occurred to me that, that uh, I had quite a bit of leakage in specifically my, my floor tom mic, um, well, both my tom mics uh, and my snare drum mic. And some of that, just because of the, the room I'm in, as you can see behind me, I'm just, I'm in a regular basement room, just like many of you. Uh, sometimes that drum bleed just can't be avoided. And so um, using gates, I'm actually able to clean up the sound, make it a tighter sound. And in some cases, I actually was able to make the kick drum sound punchier, sound bigger, uh, because it just didn't have all this leakage bleeding through. So uh, let's let's take a listen to these drum tracks that I've recorded. Um, and I'll point out here, I have only done some very minimal uh, mix bus processing. Uh, I, I just kind of want to have that preview in my head as I'm recording the drums uh, so that I can kind of know I'm, I'm giving him uh, some, some good tracks to start with. So uh, let's listen to uh, this uh, without the gates. And, and all I've got here, these, these gates that I have here are just the stock Personas gates. So the kick, uh, I've got a snare top, snare bottom, tom one, tom two, tom three. So uh, let's just listen to these with, without the gates, uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll put the gates in and then talk about it. All right, so that is a huge difference. Now, you're, you're probably saying to yourself, okay, yeah, but a bunch of your low end disappeared. It did, but in a good way. So what do I mean by that? So let's specifically look at the uh, this uh, floor tom track here, and uh, let's listen to it soloed without the gate and just listen to everything that's going on in this mic. All right, so right there, every time that kick drum hits, that bottom floor tom head is just vibrating. I mean, it, it's going to town. It's uh, creating basically all this this subwoofer low energy in the drum mix that really doesn't need to be there at all. Uh, it, it's just it's not contributing to the sound of the drums. It's just it's just this wah, this just pedal tone underneath the whole drum kit that just kind of makes everything muddy. So that one gate alone, uh, and let's listen to this. So uh, I'm going to play this drum mix. Again, I'm going to put this floor tom back to kind of where it was, uh, and I'm going to just put the gate in on this floor tom and listen to what a, a difference that makes. All right, so it's a subtle thing, but over the course of the mix, it really adds up. So now that we kind of understand how we can use gates to clean up the low end of the mix, let's uh, look at some of the settings I've got going on uh, that will hopefully help you as, as you move forward. So uh, let's open up. Uh, let's let's start with the kick drum because the kick drum is a pretty important one. So uh, let's solo this kick. So uh, we'll just listen to this kick here. There's nothing fancy about this kick drum. In fact, all of these truck tracks are completely unprocessed except for that uh, drum bus processing I have on it. So let's just listen to this. That is a that is a bare bones kick drum track. So what we've got going on here is this gate, um, and, and really all we're doing here is I've got a an open threshold, a closed threshold, and then I'm only I'm not muting the track completely when that kick drum closes. I'm still leaving a little bit of that raw signal in there, and uh, I'll explain why in, in just a minute. But let's let's look at this here. Uh, I've got a really fast attack time, 0.1 milliseconds. I have a release of 350 milliseconds. So I don't want it to just hit and then immediately close down. That's that's going to choke it. It's, it's not going to allow it to resonate at all. Um, so 350 sec milliseconds is how long it's taking to get back down to negative 18 dB. Um, and then I am holding 60 milliseconds. So that gate is staying open for 60 milliseconds uh, before it even starts to close, which is pretty much the whole transient of the kick drum uh, and then some. But uh, I think that's okay. It really seems to work. So uh, let's listen to just what this kick drum gate is doing. So it almost has a compressor effect on it, right? It's it's allowing that hit to come through and then it's immediately clamping down on it. Now, 
By not having this close all the way, we are not completely just choking all the life out of this signal. We're still allowing some of those other, uh, or the rest of the kit to bleed through this mic. And as we do that across the whole kit, all we're doing is increasing the transient essentially of that initial hit and then that gate's closing just a little bit. So um, here's what this would sound like if we were just to absolutely obliterate everything after. So here it is, the gate is gonna close all the way. Let's listen to that. All right, so that just sounds choked. It sounds nasty. The next track up, let's listen to the snare. The snare uh, is is incredibly important, uh, and gating helped a lot with the snare. So here are both snare tracks. And here they are with the gates. Without. So the big thing with snare tracks, and this is going to happen all the time, is hi-hat. We always, as mix engineers, as drummers, we always have hi-hat bleed, right? That that dreaded hi-hat. So um, there's actually a technique in recording the snare drum that has helped, and that is if you can get that microphone uh, kind of positioned over the snare drum with the hi-hat toward the back of that capsule or that microphone pointing a little bit away from that hi-hat, that will help. Um, and then the second trick I use is, again, this it's what's called kind of, I call it a, a soft gate. So we're not closing the gate all the way. As you could hear, we're still hearing a little bit of that bleed, but it's really just helping to control that so we're not hearing it as much. We don't, we don't want these to sound... We're not trying to ever get these mics to a point to sound like uh, they're samples because they're not. They were recorded in a live room uh, with other drums, but we do want those drums to kind of stand on their own, especially those close mics. All of that, that other bleed, that resonance is coming from um, our overhead mics and our room mic. So uh, let's listen finally to Tom's here and let's open up uh, one of these so you can see the settings I've got going on these. Actually, here, we'll just, we'll open up this other one as well. So here are both Tom's. All right, so that that rack tom or that that tom one uh, is really close to the snare drum, and that snare is opening up that gate a little bit. That's actually okay because um, that that top tom mic is actually contributing quite a bit to my snare drum sound uh, when I put them in the whole mix. So I don't want to get that to a point uh, where I'm really choking that completely out. Um, now these I do have going down a little bit more that negative twenty four, and that was mostly uh, for that floor tom uh, to again keep that low rumble from from creeping up too too high in the mix, but. Um, that's pretty much how I approach gating drums. Uh, so let's listen to the whole mix uh, one more time uh, without the gates, and then I'll turn the gates on uh, part of the way through, and that way we can get a, a good sense of what's going on here. So here we go. All right, so hopefully this helps you. Um, I know that gating was something that I really kind of struggled with, um, but hopefully this this will help you moving forward in your mixes, or if you're just tracking drums to then pass off to somebody else. Um, sometimes adding a little bit of a soft gate to your tracks before you pass them on to the mixing en engineer will really help them out, you know, help them get off to a good start with their mix. So uh, again, my name is Chris Gill. Thanks for joining me. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.